right, let's continue the conversation and uh, dial in a little bit more on uh, what this means for Detroit this past week that we've watched. Very happy to have with me the editorial page editor from the Detroit Free Press. I'm sorry, from the Detroit News. News. <laughs> I got my papers confused. <laughs> Nolan, Steve just rolled over on his couch. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Findlay and columnist from the aforementioned Detroit Free Press. There we go. Nancy Caffer. Thank you both. Uh, Nolan, you were just saying in the break, uh, it, it's been a schizophrenic week for people like you, me, Nancy, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what we're watching. It's all well, out of whack a little bit. Well, it's hard to tell who's who. You know, you, you saw first day the labor unions walked into the president's office, Republican president's office, walked out grinning. They got two trade deals killed, and they got the promise that he would twist the arms of manufacturers to keep plants and jobs here. And you had automakers going in, you know, and they walked out smiling. He said he's going to cut regulations and, and taxes, and then I'm going to slap these tariffs on, and Republicans are cheering tariffs. So I can't figure out... Uh, you know, who's on whose side anymore. The chair, it's an interesting game, musical chairs, yeah. Nancy. Say, I assume that it's the same from your view. I, I mean, it's just things are, so he, first he says he's going to impose tariffs on Mexican imports, or ex Mexican ex exports imported to the United States to pay for this wall that I think you tweeted this week. Uh, uh, we're not even talking about whether or not there should be a wall rather than how we're going to pay for it. Um, and then he backs away from the from the tariff suggestion it's like do we have tariffs do we not have tariffs and also it's sort of a misnomer to suggest that tariffs are a way to make mexico pay for the wall because anything that you buy that well, has would be passed on to us and I, they, they were kind of um, moving back away from that right. but because because we'd pay for the wall twice if that happened once when we bought when we built it and then, and then once when we, <laughs> when we buy the stuff the 30 well, percent of our produce that comes from mexico you know, for example that's true of every tax yeah. and the tariffs just a tax i mean it's yeah we always pay and, uh, yeah, and yeah. you know, I, I know that he campaigned on building the wall. And one thing you can say about him is he's done what he said he was going to do, and he's done it in a hurry. And you know that rarely happens in Washington. Yeah. But you know, you know, you hate, there's is support for stronger borders, as um, Representative Trot said. But I don't know how much support there is for a 13 billion dollar wall that may or may not work. I think a lot of his supporters thought that the wall was sort of a metaphor for stronger borders, and then, no, it was actually a real wall, it turns out. He I wouldn't really assume a real that. Wall. A real wall. I wouldn't assume that. I mean, well, you know, I think... It, uh, it's, it's certainly difficult to envision a complete wall that goes the entire... I, I mean, it, you're talking about an engineering feat, mm -hmm. but I, I guess getting back to, to what Nancy said, do you think... That, I mean, he did... That is what he ran on, Nolan. Yeah. That, that was a promise, and, and it shouldn't surprise anybody if that's what he wants to do. And we've spent most to this week, as we always do, talking to the people who are just mortified by all this. And if you look at the Gallup poll, his approval rating and disapproval rating running about even. Even there's a whole lot of people in America who like what's happening. As I wrote this morning, we never talk to those folks. You know, Friday there were a few cameras, few reporters on the mall watching the um, Right to Life. Uh, March, nothing like there was the week before. We've got, if we want to understand what's going on in this country, we got to start talking to that half of America who put him in office. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, I'll, I'll jump ahead to that part of this then too. We had Steve Bannon uh, take out after the media, saying the media needs to shut up and listen for a while, but also characterized uh, those of us in the press as the opposition party. Um, I don't think we're ever comfortable being a part of the story, Nancy, but I, we, we certainly seem to be right now. It's really not a, it's really not a comfortable place no. to be. And it's also, uh, you know, so we saw the proliferation of fake news during the campaign, literal fake news, people sitting in their basements typing fantasy into their computer. Um, and then we start talking about fake news, and it's now become a term that people label news they don't agree with as fake news. Uh -huh. um, there's yeah. a difference between a perspective you don't agree with or facts you don't want to accept and someone typing words with no basis in reality into a, into yeah, a computer. Yeah. Um, and that concerns me as this sort of, we, we're continuing to, to take this march away from um, agreeing on a shared set of facts, and we have to have that if we want to make reasonable, but, reasonable policy. But it's, you know, it's true on both sides. We, um, uh, the, the teachers union chief, um, Weingarten, retweeted one of Ingrid's columns and said, fake news, you know, well, because it was that. an opinion she didn't agree with. And, we, you know, I, to me, that's the most detestable two words that have ever entered our, you know, our dialogue. But, fake you news. Know, you know, and I do think we have to be careful, as I said on Flashpoint last week, not to see ourselves as an opposition party. Yeah, We've yeah. got to strive for fairness and objectivity, no matter how frustrated we get. I mean, and we're at the point now where Trump 
you know, the, he talks in superlatives. If he said, gosh, that's the best bacon I've ever eaten, we'd set up testing stations to prove <laughs> it's not, you know? And I think we've got to strive for fairness in the face of this challenge if we're gonna keep our trust and but our credibility. But we've also got to be very tireless advocates for truth-telling. We do. And when you have the White House press secretary say some of the things that he said though, that, that very first day, it, it kind of challenges we it. it. We are put in but opposition. I'm not sure this said. isn't calculating and I don't think we should be drawn in to petty fights. I covered Coleman Young once upon a time and I remember him saying, and we were, you know, the press was hard on Coleman Young, and I remember him saying, keep it coming. The more you all attack me, the more I can paint myself up as the victim of your attacks, it's the a, more yeah. my supporters yeah. rally well, to me. And, I, and I, I think that's a strategy I think we all here. see that in our Twitter feeds well, with people who respond. I think there's a really fine line between establishing that baseline of accuracy that you're talking yeah. about um, and also not being baited into chasing every, every little mm -hmm. thing that comes out yeah. because that is not productive. I don't think it plays well with the people who we want to believe that we're serious, you know, arbiters of, of yeah. the validity of information. And I think that it's, um, it's just, it's a very fine line to walk. Uh, I'm just there. about out of time, but I quickly wanted to get to the issue that I brought up with, the, with the both members of Congress about uh, Rick Snyder's week, uh, with both uh, trying to figure his way through immigration and also uh, with the expansion of Medicare. Well, I mean, I think, I, get, looking at the, the plans that have come out this week from the Senate, this is going to go Snyder's way in the end. It, um, these revisions that the Republicans are pro proposing look more like healthy Michigan than they do anything else. So I think we're going to see the Obamacare uh, replacement or, or its next um, edification is going to be something like healthy Michigan. Quickly, Nancy. Um, audio leaked to the Washington Post last week from the Republican retreat suggests that they're in a bit of a panic at figuring out how to replace Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, with something that doesn't uh, just tank and leave them very vulnerable politically. It's, it's not going to be easy to come up with something, and, and keeping coverage is absolutely essential. i got to get to a break. We'll be back more right this. The auto show. All right, just a couple of seconds left. I'm curious, crazier week ahead or do things start to settle down? Crazier for weeks to come. For weeks to come. Oh, I think we'll stay busy and then on the seventh day he'll rest. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I believe I said Medicare expansion earlier. I meant Medicaid. Good catch, Nancy. Meet the press next. See you.